No, it's the Panasonic rider, I think, who's come to the front now. But John the Paul, it could well be Guy Nullins who's on the front for the Panasonic. He's gone off the front now as Panasonic try for the big one. And this is turn. Oh, there's a crash. Turn on Lito was on the front, but he's been stopped there now. And it looks like Davis Finney of the United States who gets it on the line from John Paul. Paul Van Poppel. Elliot. And Van Poppel. And it looked to me like Malcolm Elliott of Great Britain is in third place. What a tremendous finish that would be. Elliot is in third place today. And it's all happened on the line. And the rider over here who's pinned up against the barrier. Well, that to me looks as though it's Michel Vermont, the sprinter who had been coming oh so good in these big bunch finishes. He's the rider who just picked himself up on the far right. And the rider who's lying on the floor is certainly one of the B8. Now, let's look at this sprint again here. Turnbon Vliet was battling for the lead as he came round the corner. He was leaning rather heavily, but it was the BH rider who went down and he took somebody out with him there. Van Poppel was a bit lucky to get round that one too. Malcolm Elliott, who was trying for the challenge on the left of our picture here in the centre of the screen. Finney gets it. Van Poppel is second. And what a brilliant ride by Malcolm Elliott in third place. And this is the rider who's caused the accident. He seemed to go down of his own volition, probably lifting his front wheel off the ground as he went around that left-hand corner in the effort to find the kick to try and win the stage. And there he is, it's number 45, which is Manuel Jorg Domingue, who's had a second place already on the stage this year. And I would say that's what's happened. He's tried to win the sprint by pulling his bike off the ground, and he's gone down. So, Malcolm Elliott, what can we say? That was a great ride for him. He's promised us something. He said he's going to go looking for a car one day in this Tour de France because that's the winner's prize. And on a day of extreme sadness for the English speakers in the Tour de France, the absence of Sean Kelly, we can look at it again here too. The crash of Domingue goes down. We have at least Malcolm Elliott moving round trouble there. That's Elliott on the far left. He was an inch away from disaster there as Malcolm Elliott came round the falling Domiguez of Spain. But it was too late to stop the sprinting of Davis Finney, who's married, by the way, to the Olympic champion in the road race, uh, Carpenter, Connie Carpenter. She'll be delighted today. Finney gets it, Van Poppel second, Elliott is third. And there is a historic finish today. It's not the first time Davis Finney has done well in the Tour de France, but it's the first time that Malcolm Elliott has ever broken into the top three, and this is his first Tour de France, and I know Elliott will be absolutely delighted because all his critics are now proved wrong. And all those microphones indicate that on this day of surprises and tragedy, for one man, it's been a happy day. There is no change overall, and Marshal Guéant is still the overall leader as we go off into the Pyrenees tomorrow. Malcolm, I was nearly as out of breath as you. That was a fabulous sprint, and now you really have socked it to him back home, haven't you? Well, I hope so, but uh, I'm just sitting here now regretting, thinking still what might have been. I thought uh, I thought the car and the stage was going to be mine then, but uh, I came out of the corner a little bit too far back, as I usually prefer to, and uh, build up my momentum and come through at the last moment, but uh, the, the, the crash that you yeah. saw there was uh, quite horrendous. You must have just missed out. it just took me out my stride a little bit i missed it quite easily because i, I saw them b before they even went i knew they were going to go so i just altered my line but when you see bodies flying around in front of you like that it puts you uh, just it upsets your concentration a bit these sprints in the tour de france really are every bit as dangerous as they look aren't they yeah uh, i don't like to think about it too much uh, it just scare you witless but uh, um, i've been getting into it a bit more today i, I got up this morning feeling really low and uh, the, the, just the routine of everything was getting on top of me and uh, after about 40 kilometers uh, I was going for the special sprints I decided to have a go for those and uh, won four out of four which uh, was a big boost to my morale and uh, I knew that uh, if, it, if it came to a finish today that, that, that my legs were feeling good and what about Paul or Sean Kelly did you see anything of the accident no I missed the, missed the crash altogether I just heard word going around that he'd had a crash 
Uh, I, he did. In, he, he got. He got back up and got in, back into the bunch a little while afterwards. I was down near the back and uh, I saw him just across the bunch, and he didn't look very happy at all. But I didn't think too much about it. And the uh, next thing I heard was that he uh, got off and uh, was a broken collarbone. Uh, it was a big shame.